الشيطان الرجيم من حمزه ونفخه ونفسه الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه الطيبين الطاهرين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين Welcome to Quran with Maryam episode on Guide STV Today I will introduce you with someone very talented and God-gifted. But before I reveal her name, I want to give you a perspective. Students around the world would dream to be admitted into Ivy League schools such as MIT, Harvard, or Columbia. What if we found someone who got admitted into all of these Ivy League schools? Guess what? I found someone. She is our dear sister Marwa Abdul Hay from New Jersey. Assalamu alaikum, Sister Marwa. Wa alaikum assalam, Sister Maryam. I am very honored to have you in my show today. I am extremely privileged to be here with you, mashallah. Such a remarkable young woman. Jazakallah. I heard about you from my cousin, and I also read about you on an article. And I'm really inspired by you, so can I please ask you a few questions? Sure, go ahead. We are so impressed by your achievements. Would you please tell us which Ivy League schools accepted your admission and which one did you finally choose to go to? So, alhamdulillah, <clears throat> you know, I was accepted by Harvard, MIT, Cornell, Columbia, uh, and Caltech. So, you know, I really did not expect so many, so I had to make a decision, obviously. And uh, I hoped to pursue computer science. So the obvious choice really was MIT. I was thinking of Harvard, but, you know, alhamdulillah, I made, a, I made the choice of MIT because I felt that really, if you want to do engineering, where else to go? And um, the people at Harvard really use technology to cause a social impact, which is what I really want to do. This is really amazing. Mm-hmm. Thanks, Zakala. Where does your inspiration come from? My inspiration. So, you know, there are many people in my life, and I think the most obvious people are my parents, my mother, my father. Uh, since I was little, I've always, they've always told me, you know, if you want to do the best of things, it's really to get into these top schools. And for a you know, young Muslim, there's deen and there's, you know, dunya. So for in terms of dunya, um, my mom, you know, my mom was not educated. She didn't, you know, go past her, you know, you can say 12th standard here. And, uh, you know, whenever I get a certificate, small or big, she's always so excited and happy. And, you know, getting into MIT and Harvard was a thing that she, you know, a dream. She didn't really understand it, and I didn't either. But once it happened, uh, subhanAllah, she, you know, I, that's all I wish to achieve, to make my mom happy. Alhamdulillah. My parents also always inspire me. I know you are not only talented in academics, but also in humanitarian activities. How do you balance your time between these two? Alhamdulillah, very good question. So honestly, I think that academics and humanitarian you know, work should not be treated as two different things. Rather, they should be combined You know, and Especially for Muslims, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that we have to think of the people below us in whatever we do. So in terms of academics, you know, 
and th that just comes. But for humanitarian work, you know, you need to use what you've learned and apply it in whatever it may be. So, inter uh, so I work for a charity called Indian Muslim Relief and Charities, and what they do is they try to alleviate the and help the minorities in India. So we help out uh, to support orphans. We help with girls' education to alleviate us, uh, you know, the difficulties in times of natural disaster, and uh, in provide. Um, young students with a college, whether it be in engineering or in medicine. So all these different things, that's what I really want to do. And when I go to college, I hope to pursue computer science. And that's, with computer science, I want to help all of these people achieve their dreams, as well as mine. This is really great. You are an asset for the Muslim Ummah. Young kids would love to follow your footsteps. What is your aim in life? My aim in life, alhamdulillah, I think is to, you know, balance the deen and dunya. And in the end, achieve gentle for those. So, you know, in terms of what I've been given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, you know, great education, my parents have motivated me, and, you know, they've encouraged me. And that, that is not something, you know, common for a young Muslim woman, right? So, with what I've been given, inshallah, uh, I hope to study computer science. And then with that, help the less fortunate people, you know, my Muslim brothers and sisters, and also my non-Muslim brothers and sisters. So with computer science, you see computer science revolutionizing the fields of healthcare and revolutionizing the fields of transportation. So all these different things, I feel if we bring it back to our less fortunate brothers and sisters, we can cause a really big impact on their lives. So how about yourself? What's your main goal in life? I want to become an Islamic scholar to inspire people more towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for this dunya, I want to become a software engineer like my father. MashaAllah. Well, we've got something in common there. And I think you're already doing the deen part. MashaAllah. Mm -hmm. So continue what you're doing. InshaAllah. Yes. Muslim girls in this country sometimes face challenges, for example, wearing hijab. Have you ever faced any such challenges in your life so far? Well, I can tell you, I can write essays about this topic and it's very dear and near to my heart because I feel like this is the main motivator for you know everything I do. So I started to wear the hijab at the age of eight and I really did not understand what I was you know getting into. I didn't understand that things like Islamophobia existed and limitations existed and that people looked at me in a different way when I wore the hijab. But as I grew older, I understood that me joining the basketball team or me, you know, swimming was an issue and that people thought that I could not do as well as they did. So, you know, these small things, whether it be a teacher thinking that I, you know, when I moved to the United States from Dubai, people thinking that I couldn't speak English or, you know, wearing the hijab and having it impede my, you know, dribbling the ball during basketball, these small things, they added up. But alhamdulillah, our goal is to show other Muslim women that they should not be obstacles and the, rather they should be motivators, encouragement. So that's what I hope to do and that's what I'm doing. So, mm -hmm. inshallah. This is really nice. We should not forget our brothers and sisters who are less fortunate and they're living in developing countries. I know you travel to India and help students and people. Can you please share with us some of your experience? Sure. So, uh, you know, going to India was not something that was elaborately planned out. Uh, I didn't really know that I was going to go until, you know, a week or two weeks before. So, you know, as I said, I've been working with Indian Muslim Relief and Charities, IMRC, for the past three years. We started a, a, you know, a chapter here in New Jersey. So we've been having fundraisers every year. I'm used to, like, contacting the people in California, getting the footage, etc., etc. But this year I wanted to see what I, who I was helping and how I could give more to the people I was helping. So I went to India with a group of girls from Boston. We were four girls and we went to places like Hyderabad, Lucknow and Kashmir, places where IMRC was doing work. So in Hyderabad we had, um, we got to visit, like you said, an orphanage. And this orphanage was unique such that it was these young girls and they had a school that they, go, they could go to nearby. So they had both, and even the school had uh, other kids who were, you know, less fortunate come in. 
So that was one place that we got to visit and we got to talk to the girls. And you know, mashallah, they too, they want to be engineers and doctors and lawyers and you know, they want to do amazing things and they want to come to the United States, which is the ultimate goal, obviously. I think the, the trip to India, to sum it off, was the best experience of my life. Alhamdulillah, this is really great. I also want to help lots of people when I grow up just like you. Inshallah, and you already are doing so, I see. <laughs> what was your favorite subject in school and why? Ooh, that's a hard question. Because my favorite subject has changed from time to time. But right now, I think it'd have to be, obviously, math, mathematics. I love, you know, just working with numbers. Because there's one solution. There's one answer to the question, right? There are not many answers. So I love math. And then I also love writing. So that's something that I'm really passionate about. Um, you know, I, obviously, writing in a school setting is a little restricting, I would say. So I write for a publication called Muslim Girl, and we try to give Muslim women the chance to say their story. So that's one thing that I, you know, am passionate about and I love to do from my school writing class, because you should always expand upon what you do in school. Never limit it. I love math too. But so tell me, what other subjects do you like? I like math, and I also like reading mm -hmm. and language arts. and. And then I like science and then social studies. That's basically all the subjects, though. <laughs> <laughs> I have many friends who go to middle school and high school. Can you please give us some tips on how to prepare for the SAT so we can all be benefited? Sure. So the SAT, you know, even saying the name brings chills to my spine, but, you know, I'll talk about it. <laughs> I think it's the most dreaded thing for every high schooler, every middle schooler, uh, to just take the test and score well so we can, you know, obviously get into the colleges that we want to. So for me, I didn't take any coaching classes or any, you know, kind of, you know, program that was structured. I took a college board book and I started to prepare in my 10th grade. So I took, there are three subjects. There is math, writing, and reading. So I took each one and I tried to take similar questions and try to improve upon myself, improve myself for each one. And you know, alhamdulillah, that was after months and months of preparation, it was over. And I think that the most important thing that we forget is that SAT is one ingredient in the whole recipe towards, you know, a human being. It's not just the SAT. Uh, you know, to get into these colleges, I later figured out after getting in that the most important thing is your personality your hobbies, your aspirations, things that you want to do. Because in the end, if you can speak passionately about what you love, that's, that's, that's all that you need, really. So for me, it was you know, my identity as a Muslim woman. It was writing. It was my charity work. So you know, I'm sure that college, you know, the people reading your application can easily see through if you don't like what you're doing, right? And how much time you spend doing what you're doing. So alhamdulillah, once you do all of that, you leave the rest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because whatever is good for you will happen and whatever is not will not. So these are really good tips. What do you do in your free time? What is your hobby? So when you get to high school, you don't get much free time. But you know, obviously you need to make time for them because you love them. So for me it was mostly writing. So I write for a, uh, for the past three years, I've been writing for a publication called Muslim Girl. Now what we do is, like I mentioned earlier, we write about the, you know, the global issues going on, faith, uh, fashion, lifestyle, these areas where Muslim women have not been able to voice their opinions. So I joined in a very unlikely fashion. I started to, you know, spam them and try to say, I want to write for you. And it was, it was starting off and I was the only high schooler on the team. But alhamdulillah, we have expanded to 40 writers from all across the globe. And we're making an impact on Fortune, on Forbes. We have our own channel on Teen Vogue. So all these, you know, big media publications are finally listening to our voices, which, you know, it's been a long time coming. But alhamdulillah, that's something that I really enjoy and that, you know, in every aspect of my life, I'd like to, you know, reach out to other women and tell them that they too can achieve and, you know, not stifle their dreams. So that's one hobby. And then also I love reading. Haven't been able to do much of that lately, but uh, you know, that, that's there. And then, you know, volunteering. I love volunteering. I love spending time with, you know, the people in my community. So how about yourself? What do you enjoy doing in your free time? 
Well, I like playing with my baby sister, and sometimes I go outside and ride my bike. And then sometimes I also watch cartoons and play games on my tablet. <laughs> and I also like reading and writing. Wow, well, mashallah. Uh, well, in, soon, in, inshallah, you should join Muslim Girl. We would love to have your voice in our, you know, in our publication and uh, become a full-time writer when you grow up. But right now, you are definitely writing for Muslim Girl. Inshallah, I'll try my best. In the current environment in the West, basically there's lots of negative news against Muslims and the media. And one of my goals is to show that this is wrong and that we Muslims are generally good people. And some of us are even active in social activities. What do you think about it? MashaAllah, I think for someone so young of an age, I think 10 years old, right? Yeah. You have a wonderful dream and wonderful, you know, wonderful ideas. And inshallah, you know, what we need to think about mostly is trying to show that us Muslims have the most exemplary character. Because this is something that just comes as a result of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us that we need to, you know, we need to be the best that we can be. And we need to treat people the way we want to be treated. So, you know, inshallah, with, with you know, our, obviously our involvement in social organizations, uh, you know, in the media, we need to change, obviously, the representation of ourselves in the media, and that's what Muslim Girl wants to do, uh, and is doing, alhamdulillah. Uh, you know, we can make that possible. This is great. Inshallah, we can work together to do this. Inshallah. Islam is very important in our daily lives. This is surely not an obstacle for our worldly life. What is your sp perspective about success in life? I think that success really in life has to be, you know, you need to use your deen to achieve success in the dunya and vice versa. And then in the end, what we want is janatul for those. Obviously, everyone wants janatul for those. <laughs> so, you know, like I said, hand in hand, these two cannot be separated, especially for Muslims. You know, we need to use uh, the, char the, the character that Allah SWT has asked of us, and we need to apply that in the dunya. We need to use our, you know, our jobs and, uh, you know, the efforts that we we do to the betterment of the people who do not have, for the betterment of society, inshallah. And that's what you're already, you know, you're, mashallah, at a young age, you're already doing, and that's what I'm in, aspire to do. And inshallah, we can achieve that. Inshallah. We have many great people in Islam to follow as our role model. Who do you choose as your role model? I think this is by far the hardest question you've asked me, subhanAllah, because there are so many amazing Muslim women, both in our time period and you know before, that they stood up against the prejudice that was in the society. They went above and beyond to accomplish their dreams and you know to show people that Muslim, Muslim women also have amazing capabilities. And I think by far for me, uh, the would be the biggest um, role model would be Hazrat Khadija radiallahu anha. She was a remarkable young woman in the fact that she was one of the first women CEOs. You know, she had her own business. And from Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to work for her. You know, look at that, look at that dynamic, subhanAllah. And you know, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to talk about her so fondly. You know, her character and you know, she, she supported him when he was first you know, starting off with the message of Islam. So who better of a role model than her, subhanAllah. And how about you? What is your, well, who's your role model? I really choose my role model as Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then, of course, subhanAllah Khadija radiallahu anha is also really good as a role model. SubhanAllah. We have many, many Muslim women to look up to. It's so hard to choose. <laughs> Mashal, you said some amazing names, but tell me a little bit about Hazrat Maryam. You know, you're named after her. What do you know about her? I know that she is one of the greatest women of all time. There's even an ayah in the Quran about her. There's lots of ayahs, but <laughs> one of them. Wasqafaki ala nisa'il alameen. 
MashaAllah, SubhanAllah. So this ayah is saying that she is one of the best women of all time. What other proof do we need other than in the Quran, right? Thank you for coming to my show. I was really happy that you can make it. So do you want to give um, a finishing statement? Sure. Well, I was honored to be you know, with you and talking about some very important topics. But uh, if you have any further questions, you can contact me uh, on Facebook, Marwa Abdulhai. I'll be more than happy to reach out to uh, my Muslim brothers and sisters who have you know, questions or worries. Um, you know, that's what we're here. We are here for. Alhamdulillah. I want to sign off with a dua. Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik. Thank you for watching Quran with Maryam episode on Guide Us TV. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim.